Right, so I've been doing a terrible job at being a YouTuber today and I guess this is going to turn into more of an update rather than us filming doing stuff on the RV. I don't know why. Sometimes we just kind of get in those moods where it's a rainy day and we just want to get stuff done. First thing I did was mess up the front cover or the timing cover, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I had a hole saw a bit and it kind of like jumped around on me. So Alberto did his best to clean it up with a Dremel and I used some touch up paint to try to make it look a little bit nicer. Alberto also gave a shot at trying to color match the bottom cover. So now we We've got a nice, pretty, all covered up RB25. In case you guys are wondering why we did RB26 covers, in case I haven't mentioned it, uh, they have better baffling, so it's better to kind of prevent blow by, and they look beautiful. So if you notice too, going down here, the other new stuff, I got the pulleys on there, and then this is my rad new, I know it as a damper pulley, Alberto knows it as a harmonic balancer. I think we're both right. But anyway, uh, this is a pretty sweet, piece. Um, this should be pretty crucial, I know, when it comes to high revving stuff, right? Because that like kind of reduces vibration and all that stuff. Yeah, the, har the better harmonic balancer, instead of having the rubber one, one, it won't break. It has like a gel or, or sealed rubber inside, so it, it works better uh, dampening the vibration of the engine and allow it to spin more smoothly and produce more power. It looks very pretty, so that's cool. Uh, walking around, what else is new? Got the engine mounts on there. And Alberto just finished welding the water neck that needed to oh be modified. Goodness, it's hideous. It's hideous. I'll film it from a distance. All right, you guys can see it. This, this thing doesn't want to cooperate. It's like it keeps bubbling up, so I have to like weld it two times. Don't touch it. It's hot. I didn't touch it, it moved on its own. Oh, okay. All right, so other stuff that i kind of been up to, uh, I got a sweet upgraded Mishimoto radiator for this thing. Also gonna be doing Mishimoto oil coolers just like the other builds. Um, pretty cool, they actually make a direct fit for the R32 with a shroud. However, the shroud was out of stock, so I'm gonna reuse the stock shroud, which is kinda cool, cause it's got, you know, the JDM little labels on it from when the car gets serviced. Uh, clean that up with some black stuff to make it look all fresh and shiny, so it's ready to go in. And then other stuff that I kinda been up to, just tinkering around more than anything. I cleaned up the fan for the AC condenser. Laid some paint on that, so if you notice, that's on there now, and it's nice and shiny. And went over the wiring. I had to redo the plug, because one of the wires was like stripped out of the plug, which is probably why that fan wasn't working at all. Um, also, went ahead and added a horn. I don't know why, but I'm very excited to have a horn on a drift car. I've never had a horn, and there's so many times I just want to like honk at people, you know? Like you ever mid-drift, want to just give a little toot on the horn? I do all the time, that's just me. But So I had to uh, run some wires for that and get that all cleaned up. Um, what else have I been doing? You need a red button for your horn. Why? I don't have a horn, I have a red button and it works way better. Then it gets a... people attention and they move out of the way. Oh, you're anti-lag? Mm -hmm. Well, technically two-step, it's not anti-lag. Yeah, two-step, launch yeah. control. Yeah. But already after launch, just to make that sweet popping sound. If you guys have never seen Alberto on an event, it's actually pretty awesome because before every single run, he uses launch control. So like, you hear the whoop, the, 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 and you're like, all right, that's Big Boo's about to go out there. It's pretty great. Yeah, I gotta do something to show a little bit of difference between the other guys, right? Yeah, because they don't, they don't... like, brrrr, brrrr. It's like, oh, it goes out, I'm gonna throw feet this. <laughs> you're just flexing that ECU master standalone. I see you, I see you. I'm about to have the same thing. I'm gonna be two-step launch controlling all Let's over do you. It. That's the coolest thing ever. You get so addicted to it. Yeah. We also got some Oreos. Uh, those are cool. I missed that joke on camera. Get it? Get it? Are they mint, bro? <laughs> bro, so mint. I'm gonna have an Oreo. Bro, oh, gonna have to make a Cumbies run because we're out of mint Oreos, bro. Bro, that's mint. Will an RB25 run if we use an Oreo instead of oil? Let's find out. That really makes me feel like I did nothing today. But I feel like I'd, I've been in here the whole time. Maybe I've just been doing a lot of cleaning and painting. Painted a lot of little random stuff to try to make it look nicer, like pulleys and brackets. Right now we're kind of figuring out how we're gonna run all the water lines and everything. And all this crap is used for the factory heater core. So we have two coolant lines that go into oh, the car. And the, and the factory oil, water to oil cooler. And we're not gonna use that either. No. So. Yes, it would be kind of cool to have heat, but I'll probably never use it. The only time I would probably use it is to help cool the car down faster. So, uh, what I think the smartest thing to do in this scenario would be is to delete all of this because every single one of these stupid little clamps is a possibility at a coolant leak, which could cook my head gasket and then be a pain to fix because it's gonna be very difficult to get in there. So, the solution, just run one line 
from here to here and delete all that crap. Alberto, how do you intend to do this? Very easy, just one hose loop it. Well, no, I know, but I'm in like, are you gonna use an fitting or oh, normal no, that, hose? That can be a regular rubber hose, heater okay. hose. So three quarter, five eighths, whatever size is. Alberto, Big Boost was about to go to O'Reilly's and go try to find the right line that we needed. And I was like, let's try to use the one that was in the back. So look, it almost works perfectly. It's not like a perfect 90-90, but nice and relaxed and doesn't hit anything. It's pretty rad. And now we only have two chances at leaks instead of like 8,000. You're laughing, but you remember, Alberto. I know. Taking I, that manifold know, off in the parking lot, not fun. Although, it'll be way easier because like, just like the SR, when you have an aftermarket intake manifold, you get rid of all the dumb crap that goes on with the stock one and Whoa. all the trickiness of working on it. Technically, that one's half aftermarket. Oh, the one that was cut up? No, that. Oh, because it still has the stock stuff in the back. <laughs> so the half of it is aftermarket, the half is stock. Kind of cool, again, something a little bit different with this build that I didn't do on any of the other builds. I actually went with a twin disc clutch setup. Um, yes, the car's gonna be making more power, so that is one of the reasons, but to be honest, I just think it's rad because like all the Japanese cars always have twin discs when they come over from Japan, and like at Ebisu, they all have twin discs. So I associate that rattling when you have the clutch in, the, like, well, you hear like the free-floating discs as like a Japan thing, so it was like a must for the Skyline build. Um, if you don't understand how twin disc clutches work, essentially rather than just one disc, there are two discs. So rather than just having two pieces of contact, here I'll take it apart, it's a little bit easier to understand. You have your traditional disc, just like a normal clutch, but on top of that, there's a free floating plate in the middle that that disc will grab onto, and then underneath this one, there's yet another one. So both of these clutch discs are spinning with a shaft of the transmission, and then when the clutch is released or engaged, whatever you want to call it, one side presses up against this, which presses up against the clutch, which presses up against this, so a lot more clamping force with the same amount of pedal pressure. It, well, not th theoretically with the same amount of pedal pressure, you would have a lot more clamping force. But I don't know how this actual clutch is gonna be on the pedal. Alberto says it's gonna have really short travel and be annoying. It's like literally like stacking up brake rotors. If you have two brake rotors and a caliper that has two calipers in one, with the same motion, the same thing. That makes so much more sense than me trying to explain so it like that. To, instead of one brake rotor causing friction to brake, you have two brake rotors stuck up like that, and you have two calipers. So think of the floaters as a caliper or rotor. Now these are the rotors, and then the disc, which is the friction material, will be the brake pad. So you have two calipers putting braking force into it rather than one. Such a, such a better explanation. <laughs> So same concept, but in at this, and at the same time, since you have more friction, you can reduce the, the diameter, and this one is like an eight inch, I think. It's like eight inch, I think so. I don't know, I gotta look up the part number and specs. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm back in Florida. I'm back from California, and we'll pick up where we left off from that footage that I showed you guys. So, I was gone for about two days, and while I was gone, Alberto got the engine in the skyline. <laughs> and thankfully, he actually filmed a couple of clips of that, so we can start with a rad little montage of that before we dive in to what we're doing today. Everything actually fits surprisingly well. However, as with anything, there have been a lot of little speed bumps and a lot of little difficulties on things that we weren't really planning about. So, the first one turbo didn't fit very well so i'm like trying to make it fit <laughs> oh yeah i forgot to show you guys this is a garrett gen 2 3071 i believe this turbo is rated somewhere around 650 horsepower with the ar that we have on the exhaust housing i'm hoping that it'll make somewhere in the high 500s even though we're going to run it around 450 it would just be cool to put out some nice numbers but anyway the problem it's extremely close to the strut tower now I looked underneath and apparently we might be able to shift the actual engine over a few centimeters, but it's more than less likely that we'll have to make uh, solid motor mounts to prevent it from flexing. Also was the idea of an engine damper, but there's really nowhere to put it on the side. Pretty much fit it completely. Now I just have to like, I was gonna grind out, grind this little thing down to give a little bit more room. Um, I got the right fittings for it. I just finished welding the little elbow. So the turbo is two and a quarter outlet and I welded out two and a half elbow on it. 
It has this little like flange over here, which allowed me to weld the elbow like really, really neat. And then the downpipe that came with that kit that Adam got, I, it was very simple to modify and weld the correct B-band on it. And now it has like really good clearance with the engine and um, power wall. And if you notice too, uh, there is ample room for all the AC stuff down here. The only kind of sad hiccup that we're running into is that we did want to make the wastegates come out of the hood, but with everything where it is, it's not looking likely that we'll have room to make that happen, at least room to make that happen and have it function well without putting a lot of heat where we shouldn't have heat. Yeah, it's not a little disappointing about that part because this one will be like really close to valve cover. This one might come over here. I can make them both face up, but they won't be like together. So you'll have like one over here and one all the way over here. Mm -hmm. Or one here and one here. And we it don't want that. Very good. So uh, in addition to that, some other little hiccups. I'll have to wait to show you until the car is in the air. But uh, the actual bracket for the transmission doesn't line up. The actual shifter bracket that I have doesn't line up. But we are working on solutions to all that stuff. Today is just kind of like a fab day. So Alberto is fabbing up the intercooler piping, the exhaust system, and then I'm just going to kind of work on whatever little odds and ends I can find. Um, this is our massive list of stuff to do. But the goal is to get the car running on Wednesday. So we'll see if we can do it. Madman Fabricators on his A game today. Got some pretty looking welds up here on the new piece that'll be connecting to that downpipe. Look at that. So tucked up there. It's really annoying on these cars when it hangs down low because then you're bashing it on everything. So this is like almost too good, Alberto. Well, you're scaring once me. Once I put the other things, can I be like, I'll, I'll throw them at this, I'll throw them at this. Um, but uh, anyway, we converted this to a V-band flange since we didn't have the three-bolt flange, and this is way nicer than working with the three-bolt. Oh, that's hot. It wasn't that hot I when I touched it. That. <laughs> There's a possibility that we might do a titanium exhaust on this down the road, but for now, what the plan is to basically use this muffler since we have it and it sounds pretty decent. Alberto's going to re-weld these hangers so we can get the tip um, sticking out as much as possible so we don't have flames all over burning the bumper. And then here, we're going to delete this resonator and just have a straight pipe go all the way down here, and uh, Alberto wanted me to show you his welds once again so you could appreciate them. He's been doing a phenomenal job today. Yeah, no, really, he's killing it. He's doing a good job. A little bit disappointing, but a little bit exciting at the same time. Believe it or not, there was no tunnel banging needed uh, for the transmission clearance. It fit just nicely up in there, I guess just like an RB25 trans would since it's an RB25 bell housing. Um, there is an issue, however, like I said, the transmission uh, shifter bracket does not line up, but there's an excessive one that's shorter that should put it right where we need it to be. And then also um, the bracket for the transmission doesn't line up, but that's something that Alberto should be able to fab up pretty easily. And we got the drive shaft length, so that's on order now too. Intercooler piping's coming out very nice. I'm excited to show you guys what it looks like up there but uh, he's been figuring it all out. So before I wrap this video up, I thought I would ask you guys for a little bit of input, seeing as the next stuff to me isn't very, very interesting stuff to cover in a video. I am curious, please let me know out of this stuff here, I'll pan over the list slowly. Let me know what you want us to go into detail about or how you want us to particularly film something. Um, the numbers next to each thing is kind of the day that we planned on doing everything. So like one is current day, two is tomorrow, three is the day after that. Etc. So, looking at this, if there's anything particular you guys want to see in detail, please let me know because in the end of the day, I want to make these videos as rad as I possibly can for you and sometimes it's hard with no direction and I end up just kind of filming like time lapses and little stuff here. So, anyway, your feedback is much appreciated. I read all the comments all the time. Unfortunately, I can't respond to all of them, but your feedback is very much appreciated and I will see you tomorrow. In addition, an update on whatever we've done with the Skyline, we're going to stop by Injuku and go over a lot of cool stuff with the S15.